what I want to talk about is the uh, Master of Energy Change degree, which is a two-year degree full-time at the ANU. It's a postgrad by coursework degree. Um, and there's a variation of the degree called the Master of Energy Change Advanced. Um, so remind me to cover the difference between the two degrees. But what I wanted to do, first of all, is to go to the, I guess, immediate uh, rationale of uh, why, um, you know, why consider this as an option, okay? Um, so one of the first things about this degree is that it is uh, really truly interdisciplinary. And um, let, me, let me just work through these slides one by one, um, the, the points one by one, um, because you know, I'm I'm an environmental lawyer. My thing is to teach uh, and research in the in the field of environmental law. And you know, I've been doing this for maybe 20, 25 years. So I don't want to talk about myself too much. But um, the the thing is, you know, obviously, we see climate change as one of the biggest environmental issues that's going on. Um, but you know, fundamentally, it comes down to a um, large part of the solution in terms of mitigation. Um, and at least an issue for everybody, uh, wherever they're involved in either the energy sector, transport sector, industrial sectors, um, is energy. So energy is a big part of the solution really to one of the biggest uh, kind of policy uh, problems that's confronting many countries uh, in the world. And it certainly is a focus of international cooperation. So, um, you know, I guess we, we like to think that we're part of um, the solutions, discussing the solution and coming up with solutions from, from a, a technological point of view, but also um, from an economic point of view and uh, a policy and, and regulatory point of view. So that's one of the things about our degree is that it is um, truly interdisciplinary. And um, look, I just want to say, given the short, small number of us in the room, um, if you would like to uh, just kind of raise hand and ask a question, um, I'm quite happy for people to, to uh, you know, unmute themselves and uh, ask a question if that's possible. Um, so by all means, kind of let me know if, if, you, can't, um, if you can't speak um, through, the chat, uh, through the chat window. Um, so let me push on here. Um, when I say the degree is interdisciplinary, there are um, some compulsory subjects um, and I'll elaborate on that soon. But it's interdisciplinary from the point of view that our Energy Change Institute um, is really across all of the different colleges and schools at the ANU. Um, now, no, I, I'm not going to give a you know, specific spiel about the ANU to you, but um, it, it is one of the institutions with a high, you know, reputation and a high ranking in terms of um, research activity and research output um, in, in Australia. So, you know, it's a quality institution. There's a lot of people working in the energy field and all up there's maybe 300 uh, researchers and including PhD students within, within our Energy Change Institute and all of those uh, folks participate in different ways uh, in the Institute. And the Master of Energy Change degree is, is really one of the initiatives of the ECI. Um, so the thing is really that because it's interdisciplinary, you can draw upon the knowledge of all of these uh, researchers across disciplines at the university. Um, and there's the energy experts, um, for example, from economics, from physics, from chemistry, uh, from the law school, from the school that studies regulation, um, and also the, the development studies people at ANU, just for example, of some of the subjects. Um, and so that's, uh, that's, you know, that's one of the propositions um, for us. Now, I guess, you know, um, I'll, I'll come to a, a broader perspective about this, but, um, you know, about what our intentions were when we set up the degree. But I just want to go to the third point now, which is um, about the flexibility for students. And, um, you know, for us, this is, this is important that there's quite a wide range of uh, subjects and options to choose from. And there are some, um, you know, compulsory subjects. There's two 
or there's a choice of, of two um, you know must do must do subjects in the degree um, but the rest of them are um, you know there's some semi-compulsory subjects we have a range of options um, and then there's another grab list of, of other um, other subjects that are related to energy that are included within the degree um, envelope um, but and obviously part of the flexibility is in sense of um, you know you can choose to do this part-time if you want um, and at the moment we have some you know online learning options all right um, but the other things are that you know as far as the um, student initiative and industry links I want to talk about that for a sec um, in terms of the student initiative um, this is what I mean that there's some flexibility in terms of the subjects that you choose. There's not just a fixed list of you must do these 10 subjects and that's it. Um, so, so there is quite an opportunity for you to, I guess, pursue your own interest in terms of what you want, um, what you want to be, um, you know, what you want to be studying. Okay. Um, so for example, um, you know, the one type of student might be somebody who's coming from a non-technical background who wants to feel more confident about um, being able to participate in technical conversations with, um, you know, engineers, uh, for example, or chemists, um, or people, you know, who are raising these te te technical arguments that are involving uh, numbers and um, specific aspects, you know, megawatts, gigawatts, terawatts, terawatt hours, etc., whatever it might be. Um, so, so those students will have an opportunity to to get further into the technical aspect of things. Um, but on the other hand, you might have a student who has a more technical background, who might be saying they want to get across. Um, say the economics or regulatory legal aspects, policy aspects of um, the energy challenge, the energy transition. Um, so that's kind of two, two kind of broad uh, examples of how students um, might interact with this um, situation. Um, so, so just the last thing I was going to talk about here in this first slide is in terms of um, industry links, right? So, um, you know, we, we could, I could elaborate, you know, at greater length, but, um, you know, we, we certainly have a range of active research collaborations with industry. Um, and I could name a number of the companies, but certainly in the ACT due to, I suppose, the ACT government, um, you know, policy and legislative initiatives around renewable energy, uh, particularly renewable electricity, there has been a kind of growth of the renewable electricity and renewable energy sector in the ACT. And, um, you know, a number of companies have brought with them into, um, into the ACT uh, their headquarters. So you have uh, Windlab, this is a spin off from the CSIRO, but now a ASX listed uh, company. And they, um, for a while, taught our uh, wind energy course or co-taught it with our, our staff um, and now we're we're running that in inside internally but um, you know so I guess that that's an example of because of the um, you know the strong policy leadership in the ACT uh, on moving to 100% renewable electricity we've um, you know we've benefited from more industry activity and links in the ACT so just for example, I mean, there's three, at least three of the big uh, wind companies, um, you know, GPG, which is a subsidiary of the big Spanish company, Naturgy, or uh, Union Fenosa, and uh, also Neon. They are all, um, you know, kind of active in the ACT in terms of uh, having, a, having an office and a control room for their projects. Um, but also there's a lot of activity in terms of the hydrogen sector um, and, um, you know, there's sort of some innovation coming up in terms of, um, I suppose, uh, you know, collaboration between a lot of different um, companies to see if we could get a project up in uh, biogas, biomethane and, and hydrogen. So looking at this challenge of uh, renewable gas. So that's just some example of um, some of those industry links. Um, just to take that last thing further, I mean, one of our scientists, Professor Yun Lu from chemistry, uh, is preparing a project uh, for uh, linkage with industry 
on uh, liquid organic methods of hydrogen storage where hydrogen can be stored at room temperature in a liquid organic uh, hydrogen uh, liquid organic um, hydrogen compound um, and so um, you know they that that's an example of, of linkage there where where she'll be working with um, the local um, electricity and gas distributor company uh, Evo energy um, to to move to move this forward um, Okay, so I um, just want to see if you guys going to ask us a few quick questions and then I might move on to some more specific things. Um, I've got a question for you, James. Yeah, sure, Richard, go ahead. It's, it's a little bit off topic, but what do you think um, will happen to the climate change agenda uh, given the, um, the coverage or the... Uh, the attention um, the current pandemic has taken? Do you think that sets us back a couple of years or does it um, bring forward the importance of taking care of our planet? Um, look, I guess I would see that it's an opportunity, um, you know, in, in every kind of major crisis that there is, there's a, a bit of a transition about what happens um, and an opportunity to shake up uh, methods of, of thinking around how to solve problems. And if governments are going to throw uh, billions of dollars in a kind of stimulus package, obviously it's good if we take an intelligent approach to say, you know, how can we build new infrastructure um, for the future that's going to, um, you know, help to solve some of these challenges, both in Australia and the region. Um, so, you know, this is one of the other things that we, we have this initiative called Zero Carbon Energy for the Asia Pacific. And I hadn't quite got to talking about this yet, but you know, certainly we have an active research project on how can Australia assist the Asia Pacific to um, address this kind of energy transition challenge. Um, so that's a short answer to your question, uh, Richard. Is that enough detail or? Um... <laughs> I, like, I like the optimism, so yeah, that's, that's yeah. enough. Um, I mean, I guess, look, see, we could sit here and, and wail about, like, um, how, how bad the climate change crisis is. And, and you know, I think that's, um, you know, it's kind of true. But in the meantime, there are some folks kind of getting on with projects where, just to give you two examples in Australia, the offshore wind energy project, Star of the South. And these guys are trying to get together a $10 billion deal to build the largest, you know, wind farm in Australia. Um, which is going to be offshore and produce a huge amount of energy. Um, sure, that's not going to be, you know, connected directly to Asia, but it's going to have a, certainly an influence in the, you know, national market. Um, so there's a kind of, you know, there's obviously a lot of, um, I suppose, engineering challenges um, in all of that, but there's also a lot of kind of project development and economic challenges. Um, but yeah, so this to me is, is um, you know, I guess an example of, um, of projects which, um, you know, are quite exciting. Um, and, you know, and another one is that the two projects in Northern Australia where um, there's plans to export renewables to Asia um, through, um, through either through subsea HVDC, high voltage DC cables, um, or in the form of um, some kind of hydrogen chemistry. Uh, so there's one project um, in, the Pilbara uh, called the Asian Renewable Energy Hub um, and that um, that's looking to export hydrogen to uh, North Asia um, and another project um, called Sun Cable is looking to export to um, you know from Northern Territory to Singapore through HVDC uh, cable so I mean those those projects are things that we're keeping an active eye on and we have some some partnerships there um, I'm not trying to promote those projects. I'm just giving them as examples of um, maybe an exciting, um, you know, technological response to the problem. Um, but they also raise a host of kind of economic and social questions about, for example, um, if you want to, if you want to sell electricity to folks in Singapore, how does the Singapore electricity market, um, you know, accommodate this new influx of electricity? Uh, from from offshore and will they have to change their market? Will it influence things at all? Um, or for example, was it possible for Australia to export electricity to Indonesia? 
you know, and, and how does the, the social and institutional setup there um, affect this kind of cross-border electricity trade? Anyway, I'm going off on a little tangent there, but it's kind of showing you there's a, there is an interesting kind of uh, interrelationship between the the technical questions of of engineering these massive projects, um, and both of those uh, wind and solar projects in northern Australia again would be around ten gigawatts, which is just absolutely massive in size, um, and and then you know large large amount of investment. But then you still have um, questions, say, of, of energy justice. You know, there are people in eastern Indonesia and Papua New Guinea, East Timor, Timor Leste, who who have some needs for access to energy, you know, um, and so that's that's also part of the challenge is how to get sustainable energy uh, energy for all. Um, but look, enough kind of introduction to that stuff. Um, I might kind of move on to a couple of um, kind of specific things to do with the degree. Um, if that's all right, unless anybody has any other questions they want to pop to me uh, straight away. Um, so we've got on the screen here, this, uh, this slide showing you the degree. And again, it's you know, reiterating these, um, these content areas in terms of topics in the, in the gray box with the red writing. I um, mean, these kind of specific technologies that are, you know, are possibly available or already available um, to, to be used to meet um, the energy challenge. So there's a technological aspect to this, but also we are saying that um, the approach we have in the degree is that we want to include other aspects. And I kind of might go into the rationale of why, right? Because um, really, you know, it's kind of important for the, that, that folks who, um, folks, folks who want to be leaders, I guess, in the energy space, um, they really are going to need to know um, some of the technological detail of the, I guess, the emerging um, technologies and the challenges. There's also the technical challenges and the policy challenges that are there. Um, and, and, you know, if I'm going to be a very Australian about this, you know, we, we like to talk about the, uh, you know, the BS detector. We, and, and, you know, we're part of our game is to, is to teach students to have a more finely developed critical abilities. And so we want people to be able to, you know, critically analyze claims that are made about technologies um, and to have the technical skill to do that. Um, we want to be have students who are thinking and aware enough of, of their economic questions and frameworks of economic analysis and also students to be aware of some of the um, the policy and regulatory or legal questions that arise um, in in terms of projects so and that's why in the in the in the course syllabus we have all of these options right um, so yeah, the program is coordinated by ECI um, and we, uh, we work with the conveners of all the subjects across the university to help uh, deliver the course. Um, at the moment, you know, on average, there's about 20 students in the program. So it's, let's say that, um, you know, it's not one of those anonymous uh, degrees where there are 500 students in the program and, and uh, you know, don't, you don't know who your fellow students are. You know, we have this approach where we, we bring people together at the beginning of the year to meet each other. Um, we have a social event and behind that also there's some electronic platforms. So we have the, there's the Moodle online learning platform for all of the students where we share information about the master's program. So that might be about an upcoming event. Um, you know, a talk, a seminar, and there's a lot of those always going on around energy, both in Canberra and, and uh, on campus. Um, or it might be around, you know, an internship or job opportunity that's coming up, something like that, or something to do with the, the course content itself. Um, in terms of the mix of people, you know, we have international students from all over the region um, of Southeast Asia and South Asia um, and, and North Asia. We have some students even from uh, Latin American countries. So there's a range of students who are coming and then there are the domestic students. They're either people, you know, typically it's logically to say that we have students who are coming from um, 
the, the you know, whether they're continuing um, just from undergraduate study um, or you have students who have been in the workplace for a while or people who, um, you know, are looking to make a change in the direction of their career. So there's a mix of students. Um, and, and as I've said already, there's a, this interdisciplinary aspect to our program. All right. So these are all these other topics here, um, which I could cover, which um, I'll, I'll come back to. But let me let me just go over the core business with the subject um, here. Just um, in a second, can somebody ask me any questions that you have at the moment? Any, any other questions might have come up? All right, um, let me push along then. Um, so there is a website where you can look all of this up and uh, at ANU it's called Programs and Courses. And uh, so, so this is kind of the core stuff of the um, degree, right? And I'll, I'll take you to the link in a moment. Um, but so there's, there's 96 units, we call them uh, in the um, degree. And typically a basic subject has uh, six units and a more involved subject that would go um, all year is a, a 12 unit uh, subject. So you'd be doing 48 units. This is if you're working full time um, in the degree, um, 48 units a year for two years. Okay. And included in that, um, anyway, I'll, I'll come to the advanced program in a moment, but let's just go through this um, kind of compulsory courses. So I'll try to wiggle the mouse here and uh, just around compulsory courses. So you have this um, two courses, one from engineering. Um, this is energy resources and renewable technologies and the other subject in physics. And it's a basically introductory subject in terms of principles of energy gen generation and transformation. So, um, you know, obviously some basic stuff there about energy units, uh, electricity units and um, you know the laws of thermodynamics and and so on so just a in, in quite an applied way to um, test and ensure understanding of those basic um, knowledge around around energy now I mean one thing that crosses my mind here is that obviously students may have a certain background where they already have you know competence in these these subjects and if they can establish to us that um, they have um, a background where they've already studied a subject um, in detail. For example, if you look right at the bottom of the slide, energy economics, if someone's got a background where they've studied uh, exact, exact same subject, energy economics, um, we would look closely at whether we could give course credit for that. Um, but it would need to be um, and essentially the same course uh, content, very similar. All right, so, so then just moving along from this, um, six units, um, and this is just basically a choice here between um, a basic introduction to environmental law and then a subject more taught in a, the Crawford School, which is a school of uh, policy and economics. Uh, that's energy, politics and governance. And then um, in the bottom of the slide, um, then again, picking one of these three subjects international climate change policy and economics or domestic climate change policy and economics or energy economics, right? Now, so these are the compulsory uh, ones or semi-compulsory, um, but it is possible that if you had a particular interest in the energy economics um, and climate change policy, that you could, you know, pick all three of these within the degree. Right, because obviously you want to get to uh, 96 units. All right, so let's see where we go next here. Um, I kind of didn't post up all of the full information about the um, about the program, um, but let me just see if I can bring it up here on and in the screen share, and let me know if this goes horribly wrong. Okay, guys. Um, <clears throat> All right, so this is the website programs and courses. Can people see that okay? Uh, are you guys with me still? All right, I'm just gonna push on. So in this in this um, this page here, if you just click on study, uh, then 
essentially what you can do is um, look at these subjects. And this is where we got up to here. These are the other um, subjects available. There's the climate change science um, in terms of uh, environmental studies here. And that's something that we require all the students to do is either of these two environmental subjects relating to climate change. Um, you can see here 6307 or 8003. And then you need to pick uh, one of these two subjects here, one from engineering or environment, engineering and sustainable systems or uh, complex environmental problems. And then comes the broader list of uh, subjects that people could choose from. And they go right across a range of uh, different disciplines right here from business, sustainability uh, and corporate so social responsibility, um, sustainability and computing, uh, there's economic subjects here, a range of environmental subjects. Uh, coming down to uh, the engineering subjects, you can see there are subjects relating to particular uh, topics here, you know, um, fluid mechanics and heat transfer, semiconductors, PV, solar thermal, wind, PV module manufacturing, advanced topics in solar. I mean, ANU has got quite a strong leadership in both solar uh, thermal and solar PV uh, research. Um, and, you know, we draw upon that, obviously. Um, also, the Fenner School of Environment and Society um, has a lot of uh, study of, of uh, environmental issues. And so there's a chance there to draw upon that knowledge at the Fenner School in each of these subjects here. Right. Um, okay, so moving along a bit further, um, you have uh, option at the law school to study these uh, law subjects, the sustainable energy law, it's a subject that I teach, uh, international climate law and Australian climate law, that's another subject that I teach. Um, and then we have these uh, other physics subjects, management subjects and uh, science communication subjects. All right, so that's the kind of basics and you can see here an option uh, set out of, of how you might structure the degree. Um, and then uh, let's go to the Master of Energy Change Advanced. And I just want to explain that briefly um, because there's a subject in here called Science Research Project. Uh, let's see, I don't think it's directly in here, um, but uh, it essentially, um, if I just come back for a moment to the other programs, um, and go to Master of Energy Change. Um, give me a moment here. Um, right, Master of Energy Change here. I'm um, bringing up just the advanced uh, program. Um, what I want to show you is how this one works. Uh, it's essentially it gives you the opportunity to do some in-depth study into a particular um, energy topic of your choice with, a, with an appropriate supervisor. All right, so um, this is kind of the option here. You have this science research project subject, but it's um, essentially a 24 unit subject. So it would go all year and be the equivalent of two subjects in each semester. We have two semesters per year at ANU. So um, then you would have a chance to work all year uh, for half of your time on this uh, research project. Now, while it says science research project, there are equivalent subjects in the other disciplines. Uh, so you could choose to do an in-depth research project relating to energy uh, in one of these other disciplines, e.g. law, economics, politics, whatever it might be. Okay, so um, that's that kind of initial spiel there about the um, program. I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint slides. Can you guys see that, um, those PowerPoint slides uh, still? All right, okay. So um, just wanted to show you that there is this group network within the Energy Change Institute, the Women in Energy Network. And uh, we, you know, support women to get into the energy field because in the past it's been perhaps some, you know, um, a lot of men in the field, right? So, um, you know, there's a kind of network of, of women to share opportunities and ideas in energy. Um, and uh, that's quite active.
at ANU. All right, now um, I might mention also this exchange that we have with Ecole Polytechnique in Paris. There's an opportunity for ANU students to go to uh, this you know, very high ranking uh, French university, technological university, um, and to uh, do an exchange for approximately five months over there and to take their subjects which are taught in English. So that's, um, that's a pretty cool opportunity that we have uh, on offer as well. All right, so um, there's some other info available on Newtonet in terms of um, the profile. Um, for the Masters of Energy Change, there's a video that I could show you, uh, but I'm not going to do that to you. Um, and there's some also some student profiles on the website that you could have a read of and just talk at, uh, look at the way they talk about their career uh, choices and direction. Um, finally, I just want to say that, um, you know, because it's a small-ish group of students, we have quite a good community of students um, who all get to know each other. And we have these networking events. There's a Facebook group for people to share information throughout the, throughout the year, and also a, a Moodle online learning platform for all the students. Mm -hmm.